All right, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum, Shalawan family. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. And so today we're doing two videos in one day. Um, earlier this morning, I did the video on the Woman King, my analysis after watching it. Um, but then after I listened to the replay of it, and there were some things in there that I forgot to go into, or I should have went into in more detail, right? So I wanted to come back and do this video to give more insight on um, the part about the woman king um, that I didn't give more insight while I did the first uh, video. So this idea of woman being king, um, a lot of our people picked up on that and were tiffed because they projected a woman as being a king, um, as the woman being a man's role, as a, as a woman playing the man's role. Now, in the movie, she was elevated to that status of, of, of woman king because of her battles on the field her, her way that she ruled the soldiers also because of her guidance that she gave to the king about hey look we need to stop participating in selling of our people because even the king's brother before the, the, the king that she was with before he took over there was a coup and the brother sent his mother off to be a slave in America or in Brazil so they didn't have a problem sending their own family members to be a slave they have a, they have a problem with it their, their humanity was depleted. You know how it is when you chasing power and you don't want to do what's right? And so she was advising him, don't do this. There's other ways we can make money. And she showed them, you know, the producing the oils and things like that. And in the history, they did stop. They did stop participating in getting, capturing black slaves to turn over to the cracker. They did stop. Restart it, but they did stop at a point. But greed, greed is the reason they restarted and then stopped again. And then eventually went to war with France several times. And then it became their ending because the, the, the soldiers, France was mechanized and our brothers and sisters were not. So I say that to say, just because in this modern concept, when you hear, because your mind, woman, goes to queen, not woman, to king. But look at it as authority, rulership, right? Queen Esther, Queen Candace. There were black women in rulership doing their due. So we got to remember that it ain't about a, a tag because you call king. What's your role? What's your responsibilities? What's your duty? What are you doing? 
she was a great ruler she was a great commander and there isn't a time where you have good commanders because what happens what happens and in, in they, they be in the military they come out they want to run for president why because they think well shit I can be a good command. I can be a good president. I was a wartime general. I can be president. And that's the normal thought. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a woman in authority. There's really nothing wrong with it. Is she telling you to do what's right? When I first started out and I was by myself, I was doing whatever, you know, needed to get done. And I was showing one day a sister what I do for our people. And she was looking over everything. See, a woman looks over things with a very critical eye. Because in her heart of hearts, She's trying to protect you. Yeah, you got it, bro. You got it. She's trying to protect you. Because we ain't thinking about it. We just, this is what we're going to do. And who's going to stop us, right? And we go, we handle our business. But the woman looks at it, sees your potential, understand what you're doing and where you're going. And her thing is, let me protect him. Because he may make a mistake. You got it, bro. You got it, my brother. Because you might make a mistake. And in that mistake, the enemy will pounce on you. So to save you from the mistake, she'll make the corrections. No, we can't say this. We got to say it like this. And that's and and exactly what she was doing to the king. Hey, look, selling our people into slavery is wrong. And the king had to think about it. He's like, hey, this is how we make our money. This is how we get our money. So how's this gonna be wrong? We this made us rich. And she's like, we're wrong. And this white man is coming. Not to help us, but to corrupt us and to kill us. And we got to fight them. And she's telling the truth. But the king at that time was looking at, we filthy rich. Look at all what we got. Well, look at all what I got. Greed. But she kept dealing with him on it kept dealing with him then she finally got him to say okay you right I ain't gonna do it we gonna stop it then she hit him with not just stop it with our people but stop it with all black people because we're all the same people we're all the same people and he gave her a look. Like, what? But he said, okay. And this is the true story. But see, remember I was telling y'all that when I was out and I was being an advocate. And the white people, the white women wanted me to be their advocates. Wanted me to use my talents for their cause. And I turned them down. I said, no, because they were going to pay me. And they'd have paid me good, good money. And I, ain't, I, didn't, even, I didn't even have a job then. But they was going to pay me good money to speak for them, to represent them, to be their advocate. And I turned it down because I knew if I'd have took it, and got used to that lifestyle 
that that money afforded me, then when it came time to speak up for you, there would have been a question. There would have been a hesitation. Because now I'm, I'm used to this money. My children are used to this lifestyle. Am I going to put it on the line for you? Am I going to hold back when I should be full speed ahead? So I had to turn it down. Because I knew, I understood when you see them running to come to you for their help, they already know what you got. They know what you can do. That's why when one of them threatened me, well, if you don't help, I'm going to put it all out that you, that you don't even like white folk. I said, I don't give a damn what you do. I don't, you, you, don't, you don't stop me from doing what I'm going to do because you didn't make me. So you can't stop me. You can't cut me. Because you didn't make me. And I ain't never have to worry about it. She went about her thing. Oh, that Muhammad, you know, he just in the black this and black that. He don't want to help us. And? Ain't stop me from doing what I'm going to do. They ain't stop me from eating. They ain't stop me from sleeping. No matter how many different uh, potholes that the enemy will put in your place. Don't stop. Not at all. We still get on down and do what needs to be done. Why? Not because the enemy backs us. Is because our God backs us. And we have a self-determining power. That you ain't going to stop me. You don't stop this. This is our way to victory. This is what our unborn look forward to. This, this is the day. I watched on the news, on this documentary. Was it? No, it wasn't no documentary. It was, um, it was on the news thing, on the sports program. And one of the brothers, uh, I forget his name, but he's a retired football player. And we were talking about getting health care for the retirees. And everybody was with it because he said this right thing in private. Talking to them in private about the health care. And they were all like, yeah, 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 we with that, we with that. That makes sense, that makes sense. Then when he released the letter to the front street, putting people on notice that, hey, you doing us wrong. You sitting back making millions off of what we've done. Like one of the players, Deacon Jones, getting $200 a month from the NFL. Deacon Jones, who was a, fund, a fundamental block in football and his retirement is $200 and he's still carrying the pain but when the letter was released all of these greats Jerry Rice and you know all these big time Negroes in football oh, oh I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't I don't know nothing about that Distancing themselves from the truth of the letter. 
Now, why would you do that? Why would you distance yourself from the truth of the letter that the brother wrote that you agreed with in private? See? Look. You got these damn niggas that know what you're saying is real and will agree with you in the private but when it comes to making it known, when it comes to asserting your will, them bastards running high from the daylight. They don't want to be around. Here it is, you a millionaire. And you don't want to open your mouth and say, yeah, that's right. That's the right thing to do. I'm with you. You want to be afraid of the owners? You want to be afraid of the fans? Because you spoke out? And you want to punk? Please. What happened to being the man? You know, you out there on the football field, you big, strong, knocking your brother out, doing this, doing that. But when it comes to speak up for yourself and the rest of your brothers who suffer, you can't say nothing. Because you're that afraid of what the devil will say. You're that afraid of what the cracker will say. And you so-called rich? You so-called wealthy? But you're a wealthy slave. You're a wealthy slave. You can't even speak up for yourself. You still shucking and jiving. You still putting on the monkey shine for the cracker. Your fear and your ignorance stinks. We're in 2022 and you're still afraid of the cracker? You afraid to say cracker? You afraid to listen to the truth that will upset the enemy and the foundations that the world is built on? You want to stay in their grace? What the hell's wrong with you? Like I told you all some years ago, when I was in high school and I was telling a friend of mine when we were in the library and I was telling him, Jesus is black. I said, you know, Jesus is black, don't you? And the librarian, an old white lady said to me, you make me nervous. Now, I didn't understand why I, here I am, back in high school, look, I thought she was my friend. I thought we were cool. Every time I come to the library, we speak, we talk, we laugh, ha, ha, ha. Friendly don't mean friends. You better understand that. They can ha 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 with you and laugh and joke with you. That don't mean that they're your friend. Just because they're appearing friendly towards you. Because she said, I make her nervous because I told a black friend in the public you know Jesus is black. And I don't 
don't even know why I said it to her. Because our conversation had nothing to do with religion. But I just said, you know Jesus is black, don't you? Just like that. And they were like, nah, I didn't know that. And I was like, yeah, he's black. And she said, you make me nervous. So I was like, I'm sorry. I apologize. And what the fuck am I apologizing for? But because I lack knowledge, I didn't know any better. So I was apologizing. But the reality was, I should never have apologized because that's my job to make her nervous, to make them nervous. Because who I am, what we represent is the death nail of their world. It is the death nail of their power because it's built on the lie that their God, that Jesus is white. And that they're the angels and the God is white. So you who are opposite of white, which supposedly meant pure, clean, fine, and you're the direct opposite of that, so you're dirty, you're dark, you're nasty. But here I am, a teenager, bringing the truth of who is God. It should make her nervous because it shakes the very foundation that their world is built upon. It is our job to not just rock the foundation, but to destroy the foundation. Bring the world down. Because it's built on a lie. And we have to establish the kingdom built on truth. What the builders reject will be the cornerstone of the nation. That's you. That's me. That's us. So the enemy don't want you to be on time. The enemy wants you to, wants you to be off time. So they give you and tell you Oh, uh, we're not going by the lunar calendar. We're going to go by the Gregorian calendar. So many different calendars to confuse what time it really is. So you going by this Gregorian calendar in the dead of winter. Oh, it's January 1st. Woo, woo, woo. Shooting off your fireworks, shooting off your guns. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Lies. It ain't no damn new year. You in the dead of winter. Spring brings the new year. Not the winter. And you out there. Happy new year. Happy new year. Lying. Because you don't believe the lie. You don't believe the lie. You don't ate the lie. Now you telling the lie. And you teach your children. Yeah, it's Happy New Year. January 1st is a new year. But nature's still in the old. Confuse the time. Confuse the time. You so caught up into being on cue. Oh, thing is Mother's Day. Go out there and spend your money. Why are you spending your money? Because it's Mother's Day. I'm supposed to spend my money. You're a damn fool. Every day is Mother's Day. But on cue. 
the cracker say go spend and you get your ass up and you go spend money you ain't even got it's father's day oh it's christmas and in the bible it tell you don't be like the heathen that go down and cut off a tree and deck it with silver and gold. Don't do that. Don't be like the heathen. But do you listen? Do you read? No, you'll be just like the heathen. Let me go get my Christmas tree. Child, I got to get my Christmas tree and put it up. And you going to taking your ass to church every damn Sunday. And you so opposite of the way of God. But you on cue with Satan. Every time that new day on the calendar come, whatever it say, you out there. Oh, it's, it's, July, it's July 4th. It's Independence Day. Oh, man, I got to get my grill and I got to start cooking. And I got you celebrating the independence that you have yet to attain. But you out there celebrating. Oh, it's Memorial Day. Let's get the grill. What you memorializing? You go spend money on Q because the cracker told you. See, that's how he know I still control you, nigga. I don't give a damn what you got on. You can be shouting, black power, black power. That shout don't mean shit. Because on cue, you gonna run your ass to that store and buy what the hell I told you to buy. On cue. You gonna keep my economy going on cue. Because all I gotta tell you, this is what today is. And you gonna run and do it because you my nigga. He made a good nigga out of you. You my nigga. Because you spin when I tell you to spin. You do what I tell you and you do it on cue. Where's your real independence? Where's your real independence? We got to understand that we got to come out of the cultural death that America is founded in, it is based off, we got to come out of that. But some of you so damn lazy and polytheistic that you don't want to come out of the culture of death. Even though you take your ass to church or the mosque, Order your little Sunday meeting room where you talking black power and ain't doing a damn thing, but lying to yourself. You don't want to come out of there. You want to stay right in there. I'm getting off of this thing because I'm not going to be in all this traffic. And see, you got to be able to see and say, shit, I need to jump off this ship. But you're so comfortable in the devil's ways. You're so comfortable in the devil's name. You don't want to change. You don't want to change. You want to be as they are. Because you're comfortable with nothing. You're comfortable doing nothing. You're comfortable with that. And at some point, all of that has to come to an end if you want to live. All of that has to come to an end. On cue. You do what they want you to do. 
knowing that is it's your own detriment. You know you ain't got the money, but you're going to spend it anyway. So you can make your children happy. For what? Pay the bills. Keep the lights on. What about doing that? Then you're going to give the credit to some cracker instead of taking the credit for yourself. See, you got to come out of that foolishness. Because it is that foolishness that kills us. It is that foolishness that makes us their nigger. It is that foolishness. And you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? How much of your own soul are you going to continue to sell? Is it worth it? When you really look yourself in the mirror, you like the devilish things that you do. You got to come out of that. And you got to change. Or you will die right along with this demon, this enemy. It's just that simple. You see it now. Satan challenging Satan. The house is falling. And you trying to decide which Satan you going to go with. You going to be with Lucifer or you going to be with the devil. You don't know, but you know you going to be with one of them. Which white man going to save me the most? Which white man going to love me the most? Ain't neither one of them. So come out of her, my people. Stay! If you ain't the God's people, stay! But if you the God's, the Most High, if you're his people, then you better be coming out of her ways, of her name, of her religion, of, of her culture. Come out of it. Come out of it. Come out of it and live. Or stay in it and die. That's your only choices. Come out of it and live. Stay in it and die. You ain't got no other choice. You ain't no other choice. The reason you can have a woman king is because one, she has the acclimate. These are did look here. Our sisters, now I've come across some sisters that are phenomenal. That look, I can sit and they can be the leader and I'll follow without a, without a problem. Now, every last one of them are not like that. Because they need work. Just like we need work. We ain't perfect. We ain't perfect. But we got to be able to see. And if we can't see long term, then you're, 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 you can't, you're not qualified to be in a leadership position. I was listening to some uh, black talking heads today, and they were talking about what it means to be black, what it means to be black.
And one was saying, well, to be black means you don't speak proper English. You don't speak, you know, well. But what, when does that mean that you're black? That don't mean you're black because you don't speak well. Or because you do, or because you, you, you speak with broken English. English ain't your language in the first place. Being black is not a matter of your, your language. It's a matter of your thinking and your actions. Some of us out here yelling black first this, black first that, and you ain't nowhere near black first. You ain't nowhere near black first. And that's the reality. You're a liar. It ain't in your heart. It ain't in your mind. And you don't have enough courage to fix it. You rather continue with the game. But there's death for you. Because to play with the God, that day is over. With the destination of our people, that day is over. There's death for you. Today is a new day. It's a new day and we got to be able to understand that and stop fooling around. Because you want to fool around, today ain't your day. Today ain't your day. Go find a hole somewhere and fool around in the hole. Go hide yourself somewhere. Today ain't your day. We got to realize and understand Sister sent me a video the other day, and it was of Candace Owens, and I can't stand Candace Owens, but because this sister who I, I respect sent it to me, I watched it, and Candace Owens just had that uh, hunky nigga baby, and they were waking her up like two, three in the morning, baby crying, and she wants to leave the hospital. So they say, well, you can leave the hospital, but you got to sign this paper. And on the paper, it said that you will be charged with a crime, a misdemeanor, but you will be charged with a crime if you don't allow the doctors, the nurses, the hospital to take blood and do a blood test on your baby. We're gonna hit you with a with a with a charge. You can go to jail, you can pay a fine, but it's a crime to say you're not getting no blood test for your baby. You can go to jail. What happened to your rights as a parent? That now you can't decide as a parent, as mommy, as daddy, whether your baby gonna have a blood test. Well, some say, well, they're just withdrawing the blood. How do you know? How do you know that when they stick the damn thing in there, they're not putting something in there as they taking the blood out? How do you know that the needle itself is not contaminated? Huh? Ain't these the same people who gave smallpox and blankets to the Indians? Ain't these the same people who gave our people syphilis and didn't tell them? Ain't these the same people in Baltimore that 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 put all gathered up these poor people? Say we are gonna give you free housing. We gonna give you free housing. Yeah, I pay no rent. The only thing you gotta do is take your child to this clinic if they get sick because the houses brand new was painted with lead based paint. This is the same enemy. That you're going to allow them to stick your baby. 
This is the same enemy. They didn't flint Michigan contaminated water and the governor know about it they in Flint, Michigan and they're telling their people don't drink the water passing out bottled water but what about the people they didn't give a damn about the residents this is the same enemy that you gonna trust and you gonna let them stick your baby this enemy this enemy, you got love for this enemy. These are the same people. Where else is the water contaminated? This is the same people that blew up the goddamn levee in, in, in uh, New Orleans. This is the same people. And you gonna trust them? This is the same people that kill our family members in the street and leave the bodies laying there for hours. This is the same people. And you gonna trust this demons to give your baby a shot? This is the same people. This is the same people. Why haven't you learned? Why haven't you learned? Because you want to go along and get along. You want to close your mind. You want to close your ears off to the truth. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. Why, why are you always talking about white folk? Ain't, ain't there there's some good white folk? Look here. If you got 10,000 rattlesnakes coming towards you and within that 10,000 rattlesnakes you may got four or five garter snakes. Are you going to let the garter snake you gonna stay there so the garter snake can come? Or you gonna get away from there because you see the 10,000 rattlesnakes? You better understand that the nature of the thing, it don't change. It don't change. Their nature and your nature not the same thing. Look here. You, Repu you, you Democratic black people who love the Democrats. Don't you know that a lot of these subversive bills or, or legislation that target black people that get into office? Target black people that from, from law side is voted on by Democrats and Republicans. The crime bill was voted on by Democrats and Republicans. It wasn't just one person. It was both. It was both. The Republicans voted for it too. Just as well as the Democrats. Neither party is good for you and me. Neither. So we have to have our own party. The Black First political party. Where we go for our needs. What's best for us. And fuck everybody else. What's best for us. Because one thing you better understand in America. Every people got somebody to carry their own water. Except for you. You want to carry everybody else's water and the hell with your own water being carried. 
but you want to look for people to come to your aid, then they not coming. They ain't coming because you ain't worth it. You're just a tool to them. Okay, I thought they were over there fighting, but they, I guess they loving on each other. She said they cool. We got to wake up. Our people that sleep, y'all got to wake up, man. Y'all got to wake up, woman. Or you're going you gonna to get a painful chastisement. Because this enemy is still the enemy. They ain't changed. They still giving you substandard education. They still giving you substandard every damn thing. And you steady accepting it like they gave you something. They ain't gave you nothing. But you show them love on a consistent basis. While they run you out, you show them love. What kind of foolishness is that? That's why the God say, why would you? Why would you? Offer them love when they drive you out. Have you no sense at all? This is the God telling you that. Why would you do it? Why would you offer them love and they give you hate in return and drive you out your own damn home? Drive you out your own damn community? Well, you don't even live in a community no more. You live in a colony. You live in a colony that's controlled by somebody else. They don't want you to have water, they cut the goddamn water off. They don't want you to get out of that community, they block you in. Out of the colony. They control whether you in or out. There ain't no community. You live in a colony. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a teaching on that. We're going to break that down. Because I want you to have your eyes open so crystal clear. That you see everything as it is. That you see beyond the smoke screen. Because you got to understand that there's a day coming. And it ain't being slow walked. It's coming. And will you be ready? You better be. You better be. You better be. This ain't no game. But you think it is. Some of y'all think it's a game. But you're going to meet every word you hear me say. I promise you. I promise you. When we sit back and we look at the national scene of leadership for black people in America, because at one time you had all these different names out there and they're dying off or already dead off. And God gave you one left just one left. The last man standing. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Why is he the last man standing? Because God's telling you. This is the way. You hear this man's message. This is the way. Period. Point blank. You got to come out of her or you will be destroyed. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You will be destroyed. He taught you that the white man is Satan. He is the enemy. 
but you don't want to believe it. You want to take him as your friend. Then you're going to die with your friend. You're going to die with your friend. This is the day that you rise. This is the day that they rest permanently. So that means you got to stop being on cue. You got to stop with the foolishness. You got to stop with the shucking and jiving. And you got to deal with the reality. Y'all talking about man, woman, king was disrespectful. But you love this goddamn Black Panther. And I took my daughter to it. My my 13 year old now Freedom I took her to the movie She said daddy How you like the movie I said I done I feel like I done paid For somebody to smack me in my face Because that was a real smack in the face Here it is the, the I forget the, the name of the brother uh, Michael B. Jordan played. I forget the name he, he that he you know the character he played, but he represented us. And he gets killed. The CIA, the American government, got off, got brought back to life. The Black Panther movie was the disrespectful movie. The Black Panther movie was a slap. In our face. Not Woman King. That movie showed you the reality of what you could do. What you did do. What's in you. It showed you. It was a reminder. Our God says, did not my reminder come to you? Did not my reminder come to you, warning you? Oh yeah, you did know. But how did you respond? Even, even the movie Django, which was not true. It wasn't true. The movie wasn't true, but it gave you a vision of what could happen if you put your mind to it. It gave you a vision. And as I said, I think it was this morning's video when it said, Nigga, you can't kill all the white folk in Candyland. There's always gonna be Candyland. Uh, why not? You can do what what need to be done as it needs to be done. We don't run. We don't holler. We deal with it. The battle is coming. And you got to be ready. Start here first. Remember in Django when he shot, when, when, when the Django shot the cracker? And the black slaves was like, Woo! They never seen that before. Remember he was riding on the horse? And it was like, Woo! And then the white man said, what's that? And he said, Cause they ain't never seen a nigga on a horse. Breaking the mind of what's possible. Because I see it. That's a nigga on a horse. And you heard how Django was talking to him. Yeah, you want to dance with me in the pale of the moonlight, white boy? And the slaves was listening. Oh, shucks. You heard what he said to him? 
and the Django not being afraid, and then and then the candy say, "Bright boy," that's what he called Django. Bright boy, you're one in ten thousand. And he said, "And we will be seeing these more frequently as time come. They'll be more like him, and we got to be able to deal with them." And what he tell him when he met Django met Stephen. He said, he's another jigging nigga just like you. But you two ought to hate each other. Both of you smart. But you ought to hate each other. You got to remember who you are. The time and what must be done. Don't allow the foolishness to distract you, to move you. Understand that you killed the nigga. Sorry about the. I don't know if y'all if this phone ringing is coming across, but you kill the nigga and you. I'm gonna kill the nigga and me, and our God will reign supreme. We are black first today, tomorrow, and forever. Love you, family. Peace and blessings. Assalamualaikum. Shalom.